All right, that's the gist of that. Let's get into this teaching, though, that I've been wanting to share with you. I realize, gosh, it's after midnight, if you can see that on my computer here. Um, this is something that just caught my attention. I was reading over in Matthew chapter 12, and I read this here, right? I, I got to back it up. Uh, let's see. And the people, let's see. Oh, back up far enough here. All right. A bruised reed shall he not break, a smoking flax shall he not quench, till he send forth judgment unto victory. And his name shall the Gentiles trust. Then, uh, then was brought unto him one possessed with a devil, blind and dumb, and he healed him. Insomuch that the blind dumb both spoke, spake and saw. And all the people were amazed and said, Is not this the son of David? But when the Pharisees heard it, they said, This fellow does not cast out devils, but by Beelzebub, the prince of the devils. I have to kind of be a little dramatic here. It's more fun that way, right? Um, get the speaker close here so that I can have more fun that way. But when the Pharisees heard it, they said, Okay, well, we already got that part. And Jesus knew their thoughts and said unto them, Every kingdom divided against itself is brought to desolation. And every city or house divided against itself shall not stand. And if Satan cast out Satan, he is divided against himself. How shall then his kingdom stand? If I, by Beelzebub, cast out devils, by whom do your children cast them out? Therefore, they're, they're, therefore they shall be your judges. Now I want to read that one to you real quick in the Hebrew Matthew. Um, just, just for the sake of wanting you to be able to see, uh, some, something on this here in the Hebrew Matthew, that's a little bit different, right? Jesus says, we'll go to verse 26 and then pick, pick it up. If Satan cast out another Satan, there will be a division among them. How will his kingdom stand? If I cast out demons by Beelzebub, why do your sons not cast them out? Therefore, they will be your judges. All right. I don't know if you're seeing what I'm seeing here, but let me, let me, let's do like this. I got a better idea. I'm going to photograph the screen here real quick. I want you to really see this. So let's take, let's quickly, because I want to highlight this and really get the picture here, right? If I cast out demons by Beelzebub, all right, that's what Jesus says there. Why do your sons not cast them out? All right. And then finally, therefore, they will be your judges. Do you realize what he did here? Right. If I cast out demons by Beelzebub, which we know he doesn't. He says, why do your sons not cast them out? Therefore, they will be your judges. All right. The point here he's making is that their daddy is the devil. Why do your sons not cast them out? In other words, if Satan can cast out Satan, he's letting you know that they are children of Satan then why don't they cast him out? Because he's not cast him out by that, all right? That goes back to, oh gosh, this this is just blows me away. I really, I don't know if you guys, I, I pray that, 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 that you, my friends, see that. But in the King James, you don't see it the same way. If I, by Beelzebub, cast out devils, by whom do your children cast them out? Therefore, they shall be your judges. See here, by whom do your children cast them out? It's almost like the implication that they're able to do it. But in the Hebrew Matthew, it's not the same case. In the Hebrew Matthew, why do your sons not cast them out? Okay, the answer lies right there in what he said earlier. Okay, Every kingdom divided against itself is brought to desolation, and every city and house are divided against itself shall not stand. And if Satan cast out Satan, he is divided against himself. How should then his kingdom stand? 
So he's saying here in verse 27, by whom do your children cast them out? All right, that's what they say. They put it as a question like, like he actually said it, right? But in the Hebrew, Matthew, why do your sons not cast them out? Therefore, they will be your judges. In other words, they couldn't cast out the devils because Beelzebub, the chief of the demons, was their daddy. That's why he says, therefore, they will be your judges. The Pharisees become the, become, in other words, their own actions prove that they are the ones from the demon of Beelzebub. Because why? They can't cast out devils. If they did, their kingdom would be divided. That's the whole point of the passage. The kingdom would be divided. That's what he's making clear up here. Satan casts out Satan. He is divided against himself. How shall then his kingdom stand? So the only reason they have been able to prosper and stand is because they are of the devil. Hey, I'm not making it up, friends. That's just plain as it gets, right? But if I cast out devils by the Spirit of God, then the kingdom of God is coming to you. Wow, see, because why? The Spirit of God is also not going to be divided against itself. So the kingdom of God, it came unto them. Or else how can one, how can one enter a, oh, this is the part I wanted to get to. This, oh my gosh, this part here, if this doesn't blow you away, I don't know what will. He said, Jesus says here, or else how can one enter a strong man's house and spoil his good, except he first bind the strong man and then he will spoil his house. Let that sit for just a minute, right? All right. I, I'm going to... Let's see. See if I can find where this is at. All right. In the Gospel of Mark, we have it written, right? And also... Okay, here we go. I'll use John chapter 18, 12. Let me, let me take, let's pull it up on the internet. Maybe that's why we have it bigger. And you'll know where I'm going once I pull this scripture up here, right? Then it really, really, really ought to click. You know, I feel like you guys are just sitting here with me right now. I don't know why I do. I just, I just feel like you guys are right here with me. So blessings to every one of you that are here tonight. Um, let me see what verse that was in. Verse 12, okay. All right. Now, by the way, I don't know if you realize this, but the officers... The band of the captain and officers of the Jews took Jesus and bound him. Then said Jesus unto Peter, Put up your sword into the sheath. The cup which my father hath given me, shall I not drink it? Then the band and the captain, of, uh, captain and officers of the Jews took Jesus and bound him and led him away into Ananias first, for he was uh, the father-in-law of Caphasus, which was the high priest that same year. Okay. Now, let's go back. Let me pull that over here with this here in Matthew. And what did Jesus say? First off, he gets into this whole analogy about how a kingdom is built. Because they're saying that he cast out devils by the chief of the devils, Be Beelzebub. Or Baalzebub. And Jesus said, if Satan cast out Satan, he is divided against himself. How then shall his kingdom stand? And if I by Beelzebub cast out devils, by whom do your children cast them out? Therefore they shall be your judges. Now we get a better translation from the Hebrew Matthew because he says, if I cast out demons by Beelzebub, why do your sons not cast them out? 
therefore they will be your judges. The reason they can't cast them out is because they are of the kingdom of Beelzebub. And by the way, Baal, no doubt from Babylon, they are of a reptilian race. They mingled the seed there, perverted the seed, and that's where the Pharisees come from. Jesus goes on, but if I cast out demons by the Spirit of God, truly the end of his kingdom has come. The end of Satan's kingdom. How shall a man be able to enter the house of a strong man and take his goods unless he bind him first? Then shall he plunder his house. So we're getting this whole analogy of the Satan and casting out Satan etc. But then Jesus shows you a prophecy of himself. How shall a man be able to enter the house of a strong man and take his goods unless he bind him first? Then he shall plunder his house. Whosoever is not with me is against me. Whoever does not join himself to me, denies me. All right, let me jump back over here. And this is where I'm wanting you to see this now. Or else how can one enter a strong man's house and spoil his goods except first he bind the strong man and then he will spoil his house? The strong man is Jesus Christ. And the only way that the goods can be spoiled was that the strong man be bound first. Now Jesus could have prevented it, but as to fulfill the Father's will, he allowed himself to be bound. Then the band and captains and officers of the Jews took Jesus and bound him. The strong man had become bound. Who is he bound by? The Pharisees. They led him away to Ananias first, for he was the father-in-law to Cephas, who was the high priest that same year. Cephas was he which gave counsel to the Jews that it was expedient that one man should die for the people. Remember all that? So it's fulfilling the very prophecy that Jesus is speaking about. And how many of us have ever paid attention to this, that this was a prophecy? He that is not with me is against me, and he that gathereth not with me scattereth abroad. Wherefore I say unto you, all manner of sin. Oh, here, this is going to really get beautiful. Watch this. All manner of sin of blasphemy shall be forgiven unto men, but the blasphemy against the Holy Ghost shall not be forgiven unto men. Oh my gosh. And whoever speaketh the word against the Son of Man, it shall be forgiven him. But whosoever speaketh against the Holy Ghost, it shall not be forgiven him, neither in this world, neither in the world to come. What does that mean, Brother Steve? When they bound the strong man, they spoiled his goods. What? How do they spoil it, by the way? They pervert. They will bring out a perverted teaching. That's what Jesus is showing you here. Wherefore I say unto you, all manner of sin of blasphemy shall be forgiven unto men, but the blasphemy against the Holy Ghost shall not be forgiven. What did they do when they bound this strong man? What did they do when they hung him on a cross and when they took that spear and ripped open his side they had rent the veil of the temple of Jesus Christ, and in him was the Holy Spirit. They could not spoil his goods, except they bound him first. So when Jesus goes on, you have to understand the end is seated. The, the, the words that were being set up here apply to all of this here. And whosoever speaketh the word against the Son of Man. In other words, as, he, as, you spoke, as the people spoke against him, when the Pharisees and scribes and stuff were saying things, bad things about him, he would forgive that. 
But he said, if you speak against the Holy Spirit, it shall not be forgiven him, neither in this world, neither in the world to come. Either make the tree good and its fruit good, or else make the tree corrupt and its fruit corrupt. For the tree is known by its fruit. Either make the tree good and his fruit good, or else make the tree corrupt and his fruit corrupt. For the tree is known by his fruit. And you know, another fascinating thing is this right here. Make the tree good, or make the tree corrupt and his fruit corrupt. For the tree is known by his fruit. And what did they do? They went out and they hung Jesus on a tree. An olive tree. An olive tree that bears and makes the oil, and the oil represents the Holy Spirit. So he was hung on a tree that represents the Holy Spirit, and he was the fruit of the Holy Spirit. He was the temple of God. His veil was rent. And that's why it says, if you speak against the Holy Ghost, it shall be forgiven, or excuse me, but Whosoever speaks against the Holy Ghost, it shall not be forgiven him, neither in this world, neither in the world to come. Why? Like Aaron, his sons, they entered in and defiled the temple of Almighty God. They defiled the temple of God. And so they spoke against him as a son of man, but they went further. Because once they entered that veil and they ripped his side open and the veil was broken and then they spoke against the Holy Spirit, there was no mercy. And yet Jesus earlier on simply says, verse 5, 6, and 7, have you not read in the law how that on the Sabbath days the priests in the temple profane the Sabbath and are blameless? They could go in there and be blameless for entering in and eating the shoe, or, you know, to, you know, to, to profane the Sabbath, and they could be blameless. But he says, "But I say to you that in this place is one greater than the temple." But if you'd known what this means, I will have mercy and not sacrifice. You would not have condemned the guiltless. You see, there is a mercy seat. But like Aaron's sons, they defiled the temple just as the Pharisees would do later. That's why it says, O generation of vipers, how can you being evil speak good things? For out of the abundance of the heart the mouth speaketh. A good man out of the good treasures of the heart bringeth forth good things, and an evil man out of the evil treasures bringeth forth evil things. Gosh. I trust this is a blessing for you guys. I apologize for it being so late. Anyway, listen, if you want to uh, help us in this ministry, we have a lot of things going on next month. Uh, we have a very special trip planned. I can't go into the details of this. We may even get to meet some of you while we're on this trip. Uh, but we have a specific mission, and um, uh, it's going to be a great blessing, no doubt. So we'll be sharing some of that with you. Can't say anything about it right now, but if you'd like help to support that, please do so. Visit our website, israelinewslive.org. You can donate online by clicking right there. Above the video, you can always see Stephen Benoon at P.O. Box 156, Sunbright, Tennessee, 37872. Again, I'm behind on writing people, but I will write uh, very soon. In fact, my wife wanted to help me on this letter here, uh, putting together a big letter there for the whole group of people that are so kind to support the work we do here. And don't forget also the EMP shield uh, and your coupon code, INL50. You got to apply that INL50 coupon code. And when you apply that, as you see, they save you $50 and it also helps the ministry we do here. God bless you. Thank you for listening and you have a good evening tonight.